simultaneous events that are logically unexplainable. But for some reason, rhythm and pulsing, being in sync, the sense, the feeling of being in sync with the universe, lends itself to this concept of synchronicity. Um, it's not a religious concept. It seems to be some form of energetics. I think they could be defined someday as a science where we can understand this flow and make the best of it. And I think it will be a very useful tool in the future as we start to face these apocalyptic changes that are coming down in our cultures around the world. The events are coming at us much more quickly. The intensity of experience is increasing. And I consider rhythm as a survival tool to get us through these changes into a new consciousness. I think one of the uh, great things about being an historian, and some of the books I write, I write as an historian, is you realize that people have always thought they were living in the end times. Uh, everyone, you know, because for each one of us we are. <laughs> you know, for us it's gonna end. <laughs> so, you know, this is the most important time ever for you, <laughs> for me. Uh, and every human being, I think, has that. And people have thought it was either gonna be the golden age or the apocalypse at any moment throughout history. And certainly that's very rampant now. Is it? I don't, I mean, I don't know, it could be. Um, but I, place, I think the place I've come to with it is if it makes no difference to me in a way. You know, if, if it's gonna be an apocalypse, well, what do I wanna do? Well, I wanna do all I can to bring love into the world and understanding that we can deal with it as best we can. If it's is it gonna be a golden age, well, if, in which case, uh, what I want to do is bring as much love and understanding into the world as possible so we can get there as quickly as we can. And if it's just going to carry on as before, well, I want to bring as much love and understanding in the world because that's what we need. Apocalypsis is actually the Greek word. And, um, and it, of course, starting with the notion that it doesn't mean the end. Uh, of course, then it turns out that the word end doesn't mean end not in the sense of finality or com completeness, that end means loose end or tag end or remnant. And there's always a remnant. There's, at the end, there is no end, but a loose end. And from that, it starts again. And so that, show, so that, that word end and the thread of the loose end connects back to uh, apocalypse because apocalypse means to lift the veil. It doesn't mean the whole thing ends in fire and the four horsemen trample and whatever. It means that the veil between the worlds gets lifted. Uh, so uh, apocalypse is about, um, in a sense, things being revealed. I think a lot of uh, apocalyptic thought is a projection of people's internal material onto external circumstances. So I look at it very much in terms of emotional impact, in terms of the symbols. I want to affirm the subjectivity of the of it without dis, without discounting, you know, its validity because it doesn't have to be true objectively. And that's how Jung wants to sort of sit in both camps in a particular way. You know, he wants to acknowledge that these are very powerful and meaningful subjective symbols, but they aren't necessarily objectively true.